Good evening. Can we stand our feet tonight to go into worship? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, let's just sing together tonight. Lift our voices to worship Him. thankful for his compassion that even in the moments whenever we find ourselves in places doesn't matter where we are he always comes for us I'm thankful tonight that the Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts in every situation every single heart that's in this room tonight that the Holy Spirit can begin to speak in a way that's so specific to every single person in this room do you believe that tonight any of us know this song tonight if you know it I want you to sing it along with us this evening there's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Let's just make this a prayer tonight. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Come on, let's sing this out, Holy Spirit
worth more. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Oh, your presence, your presence, Lord. Oh, yeah. I've tasted and seen. our prayer. Holy Spirit, yes. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your Holy Spirit comes and it dwells in you. That's not a choice. That's sent. But God spoke to me just now and said, you make a choice to walk in the Holy Spirit. That He has not created us to be slaves to anything. We control, we have control over what controls us. The book of Luke says, I have given you all authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall harm you. We control what controls us. And what, what does that mean? That means from the time that my feet hit the floor in the morning, I have a choice. Am I going to operate in the flesh? Or am I going to operate in the Spirit? Am I going to walk in the Spirit? So if you're like me, I get up and I start walking in the Spirit because it's easy first thing in the morning, but then the first, the first trial hits. i got to stop and i got to check my footing. I'm like, okay, am I responding 
in alignment with the Holy Spirit or am I responding out of my flesh? Or even better yet, a temptation comes. Because you know, we all, we all have weaknesses and we try real, real hard to hide them from people because there are ugly places we don't want anybody to see. But the enemy knows what your weaknesses are and those are the areas he will tempt you. So that temptation comes and you're shook again. You're like, okay, how am I gonna respond? Am I gonna feed my flesh because it feels good? Or am I gonna continue my walk in the spirit? But here's the one thing that I know, you can't have both. You can't have one foot in and one foot out because you don't have any authority from this posture. You gotta be all in, right? The Lord dealt with me on this. Every time I have found myself allowing myself to feed my flesh or operate in my flesh, I have given the enemy a foothold in my life. And the more that I operate over here, the less I'm hearing over here and the less authority and the less victorious and I'm more defeated. And then this happened, I'm going to be real honest with you. The last two weeks, God dealt with me on this topic. The things in my home were off the rails. My husband and I were at each other's throats. Everything around us seemed to be crumbling. And I went and I said, God, I need, I need you to move in this, in this, in this plate. I, I can't do this. And he said, you have an oppressive spirit in your home. How long are you going to let it stay there? And then he went a step further and he showed me how by me compromising and feeding my flesh through I'm honest, my anger, my temper, my pride, how I led the gateway for it to reside in my home. And I had two choices. I can step and stay over here. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to complain about it. I'm going to talk about it to whoever will listen. Or I'm going to do something about it. And he gave me this vision. If I'm out in my yard and I stumble on a hornet's nest, swarming all around me or I look down and I got a bunch of red ants climbing up my pant leg I'm not going to stop and call on Pastor Stephanie like what should I do right I'm going to fling that thing off me I mean, I'm going to get out of the environment that's hurting me because time is of the essence so when the enemy has showed you an area where you are compromising in your flesh or like myself you had something residing in your home that should not have been there you take authority over that thing you step back over in your authority Stop the compromise, sweep that thing out of your house, and take it back. You take it back because you control what controls you. Amen? Amen. Pray into that right now, Maria. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for the authority that you have given us. I thank you, Father God, for the revelation that has flowed from this pulpit that has given us the keys to unlock the freedom, not only for ourselves, for our families, for our regions, Father God. I thank you that you are raising up a people, a people who will op not only get the revelation, but will operate in the revelation, who have a hunger and a thirst for that freedom, and they will no longer be willing to compromise, Lord. It's easy to slip into, Lord. Sometimes the, the, the enemy will backdoor us. He will give us that temptation because he knows he cannot. He cannot curse what God has blessed. But he can cause us to bring the cursing upon ourselves because you have to honor your word. So he backdoors us. He gives us those temptations. And when we compromise, he sneaks in. Father God, show us those areas where even if we don't even know it, show us those areas of compromise, Father. Show us those areas we need to sweep. Give us the keys to unlock our freedom, Father God, and the boldness to step out and use them in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody shout it to the Lord. Amen and amen. Can you just give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place tonight? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now find two or three people around you this evening. Let them know how glad you are to be worshiping with them tonight in this place.
good evening. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Say amen. amen. Oh, it's such a be beautiful week so far. It went from 80 degrees to two. But I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful to be here with you all tonight. It's so good to have everyone here together. I'm very excited about what God is doing. Can't wait to hear what Pastor Kevin is going to bring tonight. The last, how many of you all have been getting the revelation over the last few weeks? Has just been incredible. I'm so excited. So I can't wait for Pastor Kevin to come and minister this evening as well. Before we do that, though, um, we have a couple of things I wanted uh, to do and tell you about. But also this evening, we are going to receive our tithe and offering uh, because I believe with all my heart that it is just as much a, pr a part of worship as, as even a song. Uh, there's a lot of ways. How many of you all know you don't have to be able to sing to be able to worship the Lord? Amen. There's other ways to be able to worship, but this way specifically, <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Some people's like, thank God there are. <laughs> the Bible says make a joyful noise, and many of us do that. But <laughs> so tonight, though, we are going to honor the Lord in our tithing and our offering because I believe that what God has blessed us with, that we are to be good stewards of it. And so I'm thankful for what God has blessed my life with and what he's blessed our church family's life with. And if you're feeding from this, and I want to just, as this is something personally from my heart, what the Lord has brought into my understanding and my perspective is I begin to feed on whatever's feeding me, or I begin to feed into that. Um, I get fed from here. It's not just because I'm a part of here and I've been a part of here. I truly get nourished and fed by being connected into this body. So for my life personally and for my family's life, we begin to sow into this because it is feeding us. It is a biblical principle. So tonight, if you would like that opportunity to get to join in and partner with that as well, as we begin to do so many different things that God's called us to, as Pastor Kevin has brought that revelation on Sunday about tithing and offering, it is not a, a, a tip or trying to get God to protect you, and it's not trying to buy off God. That's not what this is. This is a covenant moment with your financial realm and heaven's financial realm coming into agreement together. So tonight, if you'd like to be a part of that, there's a few ways that you can. Many of you already know what those ways are. There are offering envelopes underneath of every seat, and they are white. They have the expression logo. And a couple other ways, if you're giving by cash, make sure you put that in that offering envelope and make sure your name is attached to that as well. If you're making out a check, make it out to ECH. And then also we have text giving, uh, which is a very secure way of giving. All you have to do is send uh, whatever number value to that number. Go ahead and put that slide up, Rocky, that 84321. That is how you give text giving. Um, so if you would like to give to that number, go ahead and send however much you'd like to give to 84321. You'll just have to set that up one time. And it'll be just like a Google Play account or an iTunes account. After you've set it up once, you won't have to set it up again. So it's a great secure way to give. Many of our church family gives in that way. So tonight, are you ready to give unto the Lord this evening? All right, let's just bless the offering tonight as our stewardship team comes to serve the people. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. And God, in this moment, we say first and foremost, God, we humbly come to you and we say thank you. Beyond anything else we could do tonight, Father, we are so thankful for the breath you've placed in our lungs, God. And you would, even if you never gave another thing, Father, you've already given it all. So tonight, first and foremost, God, we say thank you. Now, God, as we come into this place, we're going to come into agreement together. And we bring to you something, Father, that is a covenant from our heart. We thank you for the ability that you've given to us, Lord. You said in your word that we have the power to make wealth. And so, God, I thank you for that ability, God. And so, God, I just encourage myself in you tonight, God, as I begin to give in to this storehouse that feeds me so well. So tonight, Father, we give it into you that there might be meat in this house. We thank you and we bless you tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Be blessed tonight as you give. So thankful for this season. There's a lot of really great things happening. And I just glanced down here and there's a trash can sitting right here. And I'll tell you why that's there. Uh, Monday nights, every Monday night from 6.30 to 7.30, we have prayer right here in this sanctuary. And if you ever would want to be a part of that, uh, we have prayer. And then also we have communion. And that's where we have the communion elements and there's a trash can there to be able to uh, 
put your elements up. But if you'd ever like to be a part of the prayer on Monday nights, that's from 6.30 to 7.30. The sanctuary's open. And even if you can only come for 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, the whole hour, whatever that looks like, we'd love to have you Monday nights at 6.30 from 6.30 to 7.30. But there's two things I want to tell you about specifically that we're very excited about that God's blessing us with. And first and foremost is this Sunday. Got a lot of really cool things happen, but directly after service, we, have, we are going to Clark Griswold this place up. It is going to be amazing. How many of you all remember last year driving past Commerce Park and seeing all the Christmas decorations? It was beautiful, and we're so blessed here with so many different, different craftsmen in our church. Jonathan Cox made a gorgeous wreath last year that we're going to hang up on Sunday, and then Rich Collins made an amazing nativity scene that is just gorgeous. So if you'd like to be a part of that, we would love the opportunity to, we're going to have lunch together, but we are going to be decorating this entire place, turning it into Expression Wonderland. It's going to be so much fun. We'd love for you to be able to be a part of that, stay after service. And then also uh, another thing that we're, we're partnering together, one of the cool things about this time of year, I'm so thankful that God allows us to begin to serve people in so many different ways. So I do want to tell you about the fact that we still have Expression Family Thanksgiving outreach. So if you know a family uh, that maybe needs some help with Thanksgiving dinner this year, if you know of anybody specifically, we have a card that all you have to do is you take that card, give to them, and have them call that number that's on that card. It comes directly to us, and then we are going to begin to minister to them. For instance, we actually had a couple people this week call in that one of the ladies in our church gave the card to at her place of business. And so that day, she's actually going to get to be here to help serve them on that Saturday, which is going to be November the 23rd on, at 9 a.m. If you'd like to be a part of, of helping in that, or maybe you know somebody, come get one of those cards from me tonight at the information table. We want to be able to bless everybody that we can uh, because we want to be able to do this as a church family because it's such a great honor to get to serve people and to get to love on people all year long but especially at this time of year. So we're very thankful for that. So tonight, and one, one last thing before Pastor Kevin comes, uh, we, tomorrow evening we're going to be serving the Huntington High football team. They made it to the playoffs. And we are going to actually be serving them dinner out in the Grand Hall. If a few of you all can directly after service, we're going to be setting up some tables and some chairs. If you could maybe stay for maybe 10 minutes or 10, 15 minutes if we all chip in, we'd like to be able to set that up so that uh, our ladies can begin to decorate those tables in the morning for the football team as we begin to love and minister to them. All right, are you ready for the word of the Lord tonight? Amen. Can we stand our feet this evening to honor and reverence? the Word of God tonight. Father, we thank You so much for it. And tonight, God, we honor Your Word. We honor every single jot and tittle, knowing that it will come to pass, and every promise You've spoken is yea and amen. So tonight, God, I anoint Pastor Kevin. Anoint his mind. Anoint his mouth. And Lord, I pray that as he rightly divides, that You continue to fill him with Your Holy Spirit in a way like You've never filled him before. We honor your word. We honor you tonight as our pastor begins to speak life into this body. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. 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 Last week, we um, talked about, hey, Dale, I, I got a lot up here. I don't need all that. I don't know what that is. I'm sounding really good up here. I almost broke out in a song. It was sounded that good. And it really would have told everything. Um, <clears throat> just real hot up here, I think. Feedback. Um, last week we talked about chaos. And can you hear me now? Is that good? Oh, that's better. Yeah, because it was, I hear myself more than I, and I have a tendency when I hear myself to talk lower because I don't want to hear myself so loud. And then you guys might not be able to hear. Um, what I uh, talked about last week was chaos and how God uses chaos to bring us from a place to bring order into your life. And without order, it's hard to have life. But very rarely does life just happen without recognizing that it comes from chaos. The Bible says that he created the, the, the morning and the evening, or the evening and the morning were the first day. It started with the evening. Uh, it started at night. 
So he doesn't have a problem taking night and turning it into day. Can I get an amen? amen? All right. Most people have a great testimony of how the Lord has brought them from a place, and they always begin telling that testimony at the beginning where the Lord found them in that particular place. And it's, I, I don't know a whole lot of people, I'm sure it happens, but I don't know a whole lot of people that the Lord didn't just find a really good, strong person and them just get saved, right? It wasn't my story, I don't know about you, let's just talk that way. Do anybody have, anybody have a story like mine where it just was, it started out bad and it ended up good? Anybody? Yeah, that's what I thought. Then there's others that never had to have go out, and, and, there, and there's not as many as th us, there's not very many of them as there is, is more of us, that they go out into the, they, they didn't have to go out and experience the things of the world. They grew up good, they grew up wholesome, with a great upbringing, and uh, grew up in church their whole life, um, and they just are good, solid people. But even those people that had grew up to the, the age of accountability, accepted the Lord as a kid, and don't have a story that they went out into the world and had to have a turnaround. Even those people have something in their life where God took something that was dark and he turned it into some sort of light. You following me? Chaos into order. When God brings the, takes the chaos, sometimes God will allow chaos because sometimes we allow things to happen in our life, and we'll settle for just complacency and just ordinary and normal. We will settle for it, and, and the Lord will come in and he'll allow chaos to happen in that situation because he's not gonna let us just settle for ordinary. He wants you to be extraordinary. He doesn't want you to just operate in the natural. He wants you to operate in the supernatural, okay? So things that are kind of normal. I'll give you an example. We had a couple things happen this week. I knew... They were out there. Anybody know what I'm talking about when I say Maria was being transparent, I'll be transparent too. It, I just knew they were out there, okay? Um, they were just out there. They needed to be dealt with. They needed to be addressed. They, were, they weren't hurting anybody, but they were there. And because I had other fish to fry, and that one didn't pop up as much as it needed to pop up in front of my face, I just was out here dealing with all this other stuff because I realized in priority of my things I was dealing with, this particular thing over here um, didn't need addressed right now, okay? Let me, let me give you real specific. We got a playground out back. That property out back is not zoned to have a playground on it, okay? We learned that after the playground got put up, okay? I, I was perfectly content. We knew we had to go through the process of opening up the, pro, uh, the package. We, heard, we knew what we had to do. It was a, a many, many month process and a many, many thousands of dollars to do it, right? But, but how many of you know that wasn't a priority because it's getting close to winter? Not a lot of people are gonna be, be on, that, on that playground come now. It's 20 degrees, right? So I thought, well, we'll deal with that in the spring until I got a letter this week from the Department of Environmental Protection. And they said, can we have a meeting about this property out back that you got a playground on that you can't have? So I could have went, uh-oh, we're gonna put that off. I'm gonna postpone that meeting. I'm gonna do everything I can because I don't wanna deal with that now because how many of you know there's other things to deal with than a playground in winter? You see what I'm talking about? We got people in the hospital, people need prayer, people having issues, we, we're ministering to lots of people and I got a playground I gotta deal with. So years ago, in the past, I would have tempted to be going, that is not a priority, we gotta deal with that, that putting that thing, huh. except I preached a message last week that said God takes the chaos and brings it to order, right? And then the, the next part of that chaos is when there's something out of order, let's just call it that, the Holy Spirit begins to move up. The Holy Spirit sniffs out things that are disordered in your life. And when he sniffs them out, he moves over them. 
And when he begins to move over them, the word begins to come to bring revelation. It's very uncomfortable going from that chaos or that disorder to order. It's hard because you've got to have attention to it. It's going to be inconvenient. It's going to take your time, take your energy, may take your money, may take resources, whatever it might take, but it's out of order. So a few years ago, I probably would have said, gosh, I've got all these other things I need to deal with. However, I remembered that message last week. The letter comes. I said, let's make the meeting. We have the meeting scheduled. The guy comes in. We had Doug Reynolds speak at the business summit last week. One of the things he told us at the business summit he learned from his dad was this. When you're dealing with government officials or people that are in positions of regulatory, the last thing you want to do is alienate them or make them mad. You, you're, you're just, you become compliant nicely. Well, he came in, they came in, pleaded their case. I learned, I remember my, my message last Wednesday and I remembered what Doug said last Thursday. So we were compliant and nice and we initiated engaging in going ahead and having this thing converted to where it will be fully in compliant and actually be better than we ever could imagine because we could do anything we want to do on that property there and the property across the street, okay? So what am I saying? Thank you, Lord, for sniffing out something that was out of order, even though it was inconvenient, even though it may cost me resources we don't have to spend, even though it might cost time and aggravation and be a nuisance, I know the end result will be good for us. Right? You don't have to look very far for the areas of, that's disordered in your life. Because the Holy Spirit will point them out. Not to condemn you, to bring forth the change. Isn't that good? He's not gonna leave you there. You, listen, I talked to a guy one time, just recently, and I, was, I told him, I said, this is gonna be a sermon, you just gotta get prepared for this. He said, I've had three people in the last two weeks come at me hard. They just came at me hard. Three unrelated people, just, I feel, I've been attacked by the devil. And this person came at me hard, this person came at me hard, this person came at me hard, and they're just, they're just mean-spirited, and I'm just having an attack from the devil. I said, well, the Lord used the devil, if you wanna call it that, to point out to you that you're just hateful too. <laughs> you, you want me to just go to the New Covenant real quick? I'll just read Matthew. We'll just read it and everybody will feel good about themselves. We walk out of here all encouraged at this holiday season. Jesus is good all the time. We feel good. Listen, he's good all the time even when he's messing our stuff up. Right? It's growing up is a hard thing. Was there a song? Neil Sedaka. What is it? Growing up is hard to do. Was that Neil Sedaka? Huh? Although growing up is hard to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Breaking up is hard to do. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what he does. He breaks up the fallow ground. But the guy was three, three weeks in a row, people coming at him hard. And the, the reality was he was seeing him holding a mirror at how he reacts to people. And he was going, these people are, the devil's just coming. No, humble yourself and open up yourself. Don't become a victim and realize I got some stuff here I got to deal with because somebody, either the Lord is pointing it out without the devil or he's using the devil to point it out to show you something's got to change. Something that's not producing fruit, producing life and life more abundantly, something that's withering off and dying, God points out so you can produce, engage in the necessary changes for you to get where you need to go to produce life. That's how it works. Now watch this. Let's go to Genesis chapter two. I'm gonna show you something. Verse one. When you, when you read the Bible, you have an opportunity to read it literally, which we do. But if you only read it literally and not pull away or draw away from it the, 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 the metaphors or the even euphemisms or the spiritual background behind it, you'll miss the whole 
application. Let me give you an example. Jesus looked at these disciples and, and a lot of people standing around. He said, eat of my body, eat of my body and drink of my blood. Now, if you know that's not what he's saying, if you took that in a literal sense, right? He was saying spiritually, eat of my blood, drink of my blood, meaning the blood of the cup of the, the blood of the new covenant, drink of it, digest it and take it in and eat of my body, which is partake of the bread, which means believing it and ingesting it into your belief system, right? If you miss only the, 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 the natural, say all the natural, you'll miss the entire application of a lot of the scripture. So when he says, thus the heavens and the earth and the host of them were finished, next verse says, verse two, and on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done, and he, listen, here's the word, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. He has rested. He rested. That word rested in Hebrew means to recreate or recreate, recreation. The Lord had fun on the Sabbath day, okay? He is not opposed to enjoying yourself. Verse three. Then God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it. He rested, he, he finished it, he rested, he blessed it, he sanctified it, set it apart because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and he'd made. Verse four, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. What's this? How many days did he work? Six, rested on the seventh, What's this say? This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the, it doesn't say days. It says day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. So sometimes in the scripture when you see the day, in the, the day of the Lord, is not referring to consecutive days, it's, it's, it's referring to a season or a time, okay? You following me? Right, so, so for example, when God begins to move you from where you are right now into another season of your life and you're moving, there is a moment that it begins, there's a time that it ends, that the, the, the transformation takes place, but in the middle from the day it begins the time it ends, because we're in time, God begins to do things to, to un, un peel off layers of our flesh, our, our scales fall off our eyes, we begin to see, we begin to make you know, transformations in our behavior, our heart sees things different, our eyes see things different, we're seeing life differently. But it might take a day, it could be a week, it could be months, sometimes things take years. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Don't happen overnight. But, in the, but it's a, the day of the Lord working in your life taking you from a place to a place. Next verse. Before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it, look at this, two things was required, what required. The Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground. Now I want you to think about this. Six days God created everything in the heavens and the earth in six days. On the seventh day, he rested and blessed it, sanctified it unto himself. He rested and looked at his work and said, this is good. I'm, I'm, I'm finished my work. This is done. But two things were absent that needed to happen for the entire creation to be able to be sustained. It's one thing starting the change in your life, but it's another thing sustaining what's already changed. We're good at starters. We're good, many people are good starters. But it's not good enough just to start. We have to finish well. We have to sustain. We can't tire out in the process when things come against us. When things are hard and become like, the, I, I, I can't go any longer. We've got to learn to sustain life. Right? It's, how many of you have started something you just didn't finish? Because it got hard. If we all should have raised our hand on that, we've all done it, right? Lord says it takes two things for creation to do what it's supposed to do. It has not rained and there was no man. Next verse. But a mist went up from the earth 
and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath, breath of life, and man became a living soul. Here's what happened. God looks at creation. He looks at your life. He's doing something. He's beginning to stack order in your life. He sees something in there that perhaps it's anger, perhaps it's rage, perhaps it's an addiction, perhaps it's uh, pride. I don't know what it might be. It could be some physical fleshly disorder that's causing you to sin, or it could be a heart disorder that's causing you to sin. But it's something in your life that's chaotic, that you have a, a tendency or an inclination to do, and things aren't the way they did, and we don't deal with them like we need to deal with them, so we just ignore them because we've got all this other stuff that we need to deal with. God begins to initiate change. When God begins to initiate change and transformation, he causes something to happen. In some of your all's life, might have been a, a, a police officer in a nice, shiny, black, blue car, right? Arrested you got you arrested and you went, man, this is no, but it really was not your way into jail, it was your way out of your problem, right? Are you following me? You, two people in a marriage, the marriage is just not good, it's stale, it's not working. You're just together for the sake of being together. Three kids and the kids know you're together for the sake of the kids and you're stale, you're getting older, you're getting older, you're getting older. All of a sudden, the Lord says, hmm, it's time. In that day, in that day, some, he'll initiate something or allow something to be initiated to knock it off balance for you to be able to see it and go, uh-oh, something's gotta change, right? If we ignore it over a period of time, the knocking off balance becomes pretty off balance where you have to give attention to it. If you don't give it attention, it's not gonna go away. And it gets louder and louder and louder because why? It's not the enemy coming in to knock you out. The enemy wants you to quit and divorce and take it and destroy your whole family. But God says, I'll use the enemy. He's not afraid to use the enemy. Listen, God is not afraid of the devil like we are. God's not afraid of sin like we are. We okay with that? (laughs) He's God. God knows how everything works. And God works all things together for the good. So at the end of the process, you come out going, I see God, I see me, and things are better. It hurts, it's painful, but you go through it. So he knocks it off balance, and things begin to have to change. So when things begin to change, two things start taking place. There has to be mist that's coming up from the, gar- from, from, the, from the garden, from the ground, that covers the face of the, de- of the, of the whole earth. That mist is, I'm gonna tell you, is our worship. It's not just you're singing your songs. It's not just that, even though that is it. It's not just paying your tithe and giving offering, even though that's a part of it. It is a heart of worship that gives him, that, see it comes from the earth, it didn't come from heaven, it came from here. So mist originated from the ground. And you're gonna see what happened in the very next passage of scripture, I'm gonna read it to you, that the man was made from the dust of the ground. So we have the power to release the mist, to cover the face of the earth. You weren't, that's why Jesus met the woman at the well. You remember this? He said, hey, there's coming a day. She said, we worship here in Jerusalem. He said, there's coming a day and now is that those that worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. What's he saying? There's gotta be somebody. There's coming a day and now is that mist has to go up from the ground, from the earth to cover the face of the ground. It's a heart of worship, a heart of adoration, a heart of gratitude, a heart of humility, a heart of thankfulness, a heart and focus of him. And as your heart goes towards him, you can't help but permeate everything around you with that mist that causes it to, the Bible says he didn't cause it to rain 
He released the mist. Church spends hours and hours and hours, and I'm not against these songs because I love them, but we're, we're spending hours and hours and hours going, rain down on us, God, rain down on us. He didn't rain in Genesis. The mist come from here. Rain, rain down, rain, stay right down. And you know what he's doing? I finished work the last chapter. It's finished. The work is finished. For it, for, 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 for the creation, all, not just heavens, and, not just the earth, heaven and the earth. For, for the histories of the heaven and earth were made in that day. And he said, he looked at his creation, heaven and earth, not just earth, heaven and earth. And he looked and he said, hey guys, there's two things we're missing. We're missing, there's no rain to cover the earth to cause it to grow. And, and, and I don't have a man to till the ground. I need two things. I need man and I need mist. I need a person that's willing and I need a heart of worship. Those two things alone will cause everything that I created in order to reproduce after its own kind, to grow and produce within itself. Grass was growing from the earth. God didn't say, grass grow, grass grow, grass grow. Trust me, we can cut this grass out here in the middle of June or May. You can't sit out here and watch it grow. But if you come back next Sunday, you will see that it has grown. God's not looking at that saying, it's gotta grow, it's gotta grow, it's gotta grow. God said it in the six days to grow. My job is to keep the mist and it dressed. Your finances need two things, mist and you. Your family needs two things, mist and you. Your relationships, two things, mist and you. And what is mist? Mist is a heart of worship. It's not just, I'm, I'm telling you guys, we're screaming and praying for rain, 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 and God did not rain in Genesis. He sent a mist from the ground. It's not gonna initiate there. He's already initiated it here. And we are on the ground. The worship will come from the heart of gratitude. You want greater relationships, strong relationships amongst your friends and family. You feel alone and isolated. I don't have anybody in my life. Then you got to make yourself friendly. Right? Nobody wants to talk to some bullheaded person. Can I just be real honest with you tonight? That feels sorry for themselves all the time. And all the time, the only thing you to do is dump your problems on everybody else. I just need somebody to talk to. No, you need a dumpster. Is it okay? Because what's happening is people sit back and they feel isolated and alone. God, I feel isolated and alone. What, what are you doing for somebody else? If it's coming from, you're, if you're the receiver of it, it's not coming from your mist. You're to give off mist. A heart of worship, gratitude, thanksgiving. If, if your, listen, if your financial situation is in disarray, if it's, if it's out of order, disordered, I guarantee you, you don't have to go, you don't, you don't need a confirmation for that to be done. You know it's out of order. You already know. You don't need an epiphany from heaven. You don't need a dub to come flying in your bedroom window and saying, you're out of order in your finance. You already know it because you're feeling the pressure and the stress of it. And when you feel the pressure and the stress of it, God initiates something to get your attention to it and focus on it, and you need two things. If God needed two things, you need two things. Missed. And the first thing you do when you're starting to focus on those finances is you're grateful for what you do have. You're not unthankful for what you don't have. You're grateful for what you do have. You may not have enough money to pay everything, but you've got enough money to pay something. And it starts with thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what I've got. I'm not gonna sit and focus on my lack, even though my, my, my be put order and missed in the, in, the, in the situation is gonna change it. I'm gonna start right here. Heart of worship. 
We think heart of worship is singing, and it is a part of that, but a heart of wor- worship is thanking the Lord and a heart of gratitude about what God has done for you. You don't have to look far to find out what God has done for you. And the minute you become ungrateful, you become prideful. Because it's the beginning. Humility and gratefulness is, is, is the basis for, the, all of hum, for, for all of humility. And you begin thankful for what you do have. Am I, am I talking to anybody tonight? This is critical. Because I've looked back and I said, he set the pattern here for us. Let's go back and read verse six real quick. Verse five, let's go back one more. Let's put it all in context. Before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from where? So the church's position has got to change. Instead of saying, God, rain down, we've got to say, mist up. That's a picture of, of, of it originating in the heart. Two things. Water, the, whole, the mist went up from the earth, near the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Next verse. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Next verse, what's this? Let's keep going. Then the Lord God planted a garden eastward and Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. Who put the man there? God. Right? You ever heard a statement, you made your bed, you lay in it? I got news for you. You might have made a really bad decision to get you where you are, but don't think for one minute that the Lord got caught off guard. And don't think for one moment the Lord doesn't order your steps. Are are you with me? Right? He'll order your steps, he'll get you where you need to go, and he'll order them by creating a path for you to see. Watch this, there he put a man in whom he had formed, verse verse nine. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree that grows, that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. The tree of life also was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil was also in the midst of the garden. Verse 10 says, now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there, it parted and became Four river heads. I don't have time to go on that, but that's four, one river, one spirit, four heads. You should have four separate incomes in your life. Let's go, I'll go on. The name of the first is Pishon. It is one that, with, that which skirts the whole land of Havilah where there is gold. Now, who made that? God. Does God want you to be prosperous? Does God want you to have what you need? If he didn't, then he would have put man right next to the, in that garden that had those rivers with gold. Okay? Now, it's not about getting prosperous to make your name great. But God gets no glory in you begging and getting, just getting by. Right? It is one that skirts with whole land with gold. Next verse, there's four heads. And the gold that it land is good. Bedlam and onyx stone are there. I'm getting somewhere here. And the name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Hidelka. It is the one that goes toward the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the great river Euphrates. Look, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend to keep it. He, before he ever placed the man in the garden, he put every tree the life tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the tree. He gave it a great river called Euphrates and out of that great river came four heads. Every bit of resource, natural resources, the Lord gave. Only thing that was missing in all of that before was two things, the mist or the rain and the man. Those two things originate from, God brought them but they come from us. 
So everything was sustained, everything was there, but he said two things have to happen for this thing to grow and reproduce, mist and people. Are you with me, okay? Then he took the man and he put him there. It's, listen, it's one thing to wander and be a vagabond. It's another thing to be put. You're not here by accident. Some of you guys have come in the joint, be part, joint Bobby and have, have others have joined the church. And I know you guys go to several different churches during the week. And, and some people are coming and going, I just, I belong here. I'm supposed to be here, right? You need to be where God placed you. Not where you're comfortable. Not, don't shop us. I'm not auditioning. Is that okay? This isn't the voice. We're not TBN or Daystar. No. Hey, I placed here. I'm set here with other people that are set and placed here too. Right? And we're tending to the garden that he gave us. Oh, this will preach. I'm telling you right now. And most of us wouldn't have been placed here if we hadn't have had some chaos in our life that caused us to move to the place. We didn't know where the garden was until God moved, ordered our steps to get here. Next verse. Because most of us would have stayed over there out of the garden thinking it was the garden. Oh, I'm gonna start hacking in a minute. I can feel that preach coming on. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, listen, here's what I want you to see. I want you to three things tonight. This is the third one. Of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. Stop right there for just a second. Of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. God's intent from the very beginning of time was never thou shalt not. It was you shall. It was never passing the test of temptation. It was eating of all the trees of the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the garden. We okay with this? When man fell, everything became thou shalt not. That's why we got the 10 commandments. Thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. When Jesus comes in the new covenant, he comes back to the garden and says, you shall. The church has made a doctrine of what you can't do. So we try to put the rules and regulations in place to keep people from sinning. And while we're managing them not to sin, they're not eating of the tree of every, of the gar, in the garden. Because we're so, fo so focused on the tree of knowledge of good and evil not to eat it. And can I tell you who those trees are, what those trees are in the garden? You and me. We're trees of righteousness that are planted by that river that's talked about in Revelation. Trees of righteousness planted by the river. And your tree produces fruit. And I should be able to come to you and partake and eat of the fruit of your tree that will be good food for me and bring growth to me. Are you following me? I need encouraged. I need to be able to eat from the tree of your encouragement. I need your wisdom on finance. I need to be able to come to you and eat from the tree of wisdom from your financial tree. I need your hospitality. I need to be able to come. But guess what? I just can't be a consumer because I'm a tree too. And the more you eat of the tree, the more strength you get from the, it's going to make you stronger. So we eat of the tree and we partake of the tree and we have fruit that comes from our branches that other people eat from. Because we're trees of righteousness in the garden of God, planted by the river, to have mist go up, to water the face of the ground and be the man he's called us to be to tend to it. It's good stuff. It's eight o'clock. The voice just came on. <laughs> Kentucky got beat last night by Evansville. 
I've been in a state of depression since last night. Me and Sean, how do you think me and Sean were going to be able to make it tonight? It's a bad day. But we got missed coming up from it because we got another game Saturday. <laughs> right? We'll play again. Can't quit. Season done over. We've got 20 some more games, maybe 30. We're going to go to the final four and eat of the tree of Kentucky Wildcats come <laughs> April 2nd when it's final four time. Next verse. <laughs> But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Here's the thing. All the trees you eat. Do you know the scripture that says there's people that have died before their time? In Corinthians, Paul said people went to sleep before their time because they've not learned to discern the Lord's body. Can I take, this is a picture of it. The lack, the, 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 the deficiency of the body of, the, of, the, of God, the garden, the deficiency of the trees coming into full maturity that we can partake of, which Revelation 21 says is healing for the nations. The lack of that, the lack of our maturity, of understanding the scriptures, that mist can come up from us, a heart of worship, to face water the whole face of the ground, that causes things to grow. The, the deficiency has caused people to die before their time. Because the whole foundation of the earth is out. So we, over courses of history and decades of time, preaching, I've done it myself and had to repent, still repent of stuff I preached a year ago. Especially stuff 10 years ago. And I've preached, and i preached because you see you see sin running rampant. You see crazy things happening in people's life. And anger rises up inside of you in a healthy, wholesome way. So you begin to attack that thing. You gotta attack it. So you begin to preach, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes, it's in the scripture. But before don't eat is eat. So we preach to people and tell people and we counsel people. We talk, you can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. They become so focused on what they can't do, they don't even know what's good for them. I got a buddy of mine, a preacher. Um, hopefully he'll come next year and speak some. But he's a great guy. He lost like 60 pounds on the grace diet. I said, oh, the grace diet. I thought he said grease diet at first. I was going to sign up for it. He said grace diet. So he said the grace diet. He said, here's what I do. I wake up every morning and I don't think about what I can't have. But I make sure I fill up on anything that's good for me. And I just put it in. I just eat, eat that first. If I still want cake or pie or cookies or ice cream after I filled up myself with those things, I'll have it. He said, but what I found is the more I put in that's good, the less I desire of things that are not good for me. Yep. I still like that grease diet better, but <laughs> anybody know what I'm talking about? So the bottom line tonight, what I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop right here because I want to summarize this because I know there's a lot of scripture in this and a lot of metaphors, but you gotta get this. This is it's incredibly important that, that you, when, 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 when chaos, listen, anything that's disordered in your life God is not gonna let it sit there when you belong to him, right? And as much as you wanna ignore it, it's not gonna go away. It's gonna to have to be dealt with. Now, I'm not saying you initiate attacking every problem you have in your life, but you don't ignore when the spotlight starts coming on the chaos. It's God's invitation to you to recognize that the spirit of God's hovering over that chaos because he's about to bring a word of illumination like he did in Revelation or chapter one of Genesis. He's gonna bring a revelation, an illumination, an exposure of light to bring you out of that dark, obscure place. That he can bring you into a place of life and have life more abundantly, right? When that begins to happen, he needs your cooperation and my cooperation. He needs two things because he don't want to bring you out if you can't sustain it. He wants you to come out and sustain life. 
in that area that you've got victory over. He'll bring you out of the financial de deficit and bring you into a place of prosperity. But if you don't have two things, he won't sustain the prosperity. It's missed heart of worship, of gratitude, of life and thankfulness for him and who he has. And your default button can't be your insufficiencies. Your default button has to be, I'm thankful for what I do have. And you begin to, I'm not just talking, I'm not trying to just swindle God into saying it. You gotta come from that place. God, I may not have 30 people that, that, that are in my life, but I got one. And I'm not gonna be ungrateful for the 30 I don't have, but I'm certainly grateful for the one I do. Right? I had a guy tell me just recently, had a little hard times, hit his life. Walked into his kids, unemployment check had run out. He was, he was done. He walked into the refrigerator and he opened up and all he had was some little the cereal and his kids were hungry. And he opened up the refrigerator and all that was in there was just, just a small portion of a gallon of milk left. And he opened it up and he slammed the door. He looked at God, he said, God, I put applications in everywhere. If I go to work, who's gonna watch my kids? He's got that whole dilemma going through his mind. I can't, I can't, if I go to work, I can't afford daycare. I can't pay a babysitter. So he's stuck in between this thing and he's just slammed the door and he said, God, where are you? Where are you? Goes out, checks his mail, disconnect notice on his electric and an eviction letter on his rent. Same, same day. He comes back and he says, God, where are you? What do I, what do, I do? So he calls me on the telephone. He says, man, I don't know what to do. And I said, thank God, today's the last day that you toil. I'm not saying it's gonna get easier for the next few days. I'm just saying today's the last day because today it all starts turning. You're gonna turn. I said, how much milk do you say you had? He said, I got just a little bit, probably for one or two bowls of cereal. I said, you know what we're gonna do right now? We're gonna thank God for you got two bowls of cereal and milk. You don't have a gallon, but you got what you got. He said, you're right. I said, start thanking him. He starts crying that he had that much milk left. Crying. I said, look around you. He said, yeah. I said, is your electric turned off today? He said, no, the lights are on, TV's on, kids are watching TV. I said, you know what we're gonna do right now? He said, what? We're gonna thank God that we got lights on today and TV on. Yeah. We're not gonna borrow tomorrow's trouble. Even though we know tomorrow's coming, we're not gonna borrow it. And he said, man, yeah, you're right. I said, is it is it, it was summertime, I said, is it cool in your house today? Air conditioner work? Yeah. You have to be out today? No. You're gonna be able to lay your head on that same pillow in that same bed in that same apartment tonight? I am. I said, you know what we're gonna do right now? He said, I already got it. We're gonna thank God for right now, right? I said, you better believe we are. He began to cry out to God and, think, and he started wailing and groaning from inside of him. And I start crying because I'm thinking to myself, you prideful jerk, you. Thinking of me, because you know what? I had my own stuff going on. It wasn't his stuff. And I realized I better get a heart of worship and a miss going up for me in areas that I should be thankful for. You know? I just had some, a bunch of physical stuff, that, that, that uh, tests that I had done for just preventive stuff. Everything came back a clear bill of health, perfect health. And here I was thinking to myself, man, and the Lord says, why don't you, He's thankful for a, a little bit of milk and you got a healthy body. I thought, God, thank you for a healthy body. And I started thanking him. I started thanking him for healthy kids and healthy life and healthy, and, 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 and even so, sometimes the kids back talk again. I thank God they back talk. At least they can talk back to me. And I started getting thankful about that. And before you know it, my heart started changing. Am I, am I talking to anybody? Amen. And it, it sounds so simple and then I saw this scripture, I knew this scripture, I taught it 10 years ago. Mist went up from the, the ground, the earth, and covered the whole face of the ground. Then I jumped in the car and I took the guy over a bunch of groceries. You know, and I asked the Lord on the way over, I said, why didn't I get compelled to take him groceries? Because I could have fixed, I could have, I could have filled his cupboards up but why didn't, why wasn't that? The Lord says, I'm not looking. 
for filling these covers up this week because you have to go back and fill these covers up next week. What I needed him to do was have a mist that came from the earth that covered the whole face of his ground so he could be sustained. Things began to turn around. Things began to turn around. This friend of his told him, he said, man, you're just being optimistic. He said, no, I'm just thankful for the little things. And when you're thankful for the little, God will make you ruler over a bunch. Would you stand with me? I don't know what it is tonight that you gotta be thankful for. You know what I'm thankful for? We got a, we got a playground back there that's on the ground that's not supposed to be. And I could throw a fit about that. But you know what I'm thankful for? We got ground and we got a playground. Right? And we're not gonna try to get out of it. We're gonna be thankful. And as we're thankful of what we've got and the Lord has blessed us, the Lord will bring us the solutions and the process and the provision and whatever it takes to make it what it's supposed to be. He'll do the same thing for you in every area of your life. So we could grow up to be that tree of righteousness planted by the river into maturity that our leaves and our fruit will be healing for the nations. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said Amen. God bless you. I will see you all Sunday. Don't miss Sunday morning, by the way. It's the last night, last morning of the Greater Things series.